Welcome back to Bargaining 101. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on incentives to misrepresent. We're continuing our unit on uncertainty, which is the subject of Chapter 7 of Game Theory 101 Bargaining. Check the video description for more information on that. To recap the last couple of lectures, we've seen that with uncertainty and the right parameter space, a proposer of an offer might make a very aggressive offer to a receiver when the proposer doesn't know whether the receiver is weak or strong. When the receiver is actually weak, this turns out to be very good for the proposer because the receiver accepts a very small offer, leaving a lot of stuff left over for the proposer, but it backfires against the stronger types because the stronger types reject and we don't see a bargain resolution. And we say that this latter outcome is inefficient because after the fact, after payoffs have been realized and all information is revealed, we could have retroactively gone back, changed the division of the good that was being proposed, and leave both parties better off as a result. The question I ended with last time is, given that uncertainty is leading to this inefficiency, and inefficiency can be bad for both parties or is bad for both parties by definition, why don't we just figure out a way to communicate the value of the outside option? If the receiver of the offer, the one that the proposer doesn't know whether he's weak or strong, if we figure out a way for those guys to tell the proposer of the offer their actual outside option values, then we would allow the proposer to make the right offer, in which case we would see efficient outcomes. So why don't we figure out a way to do this? Why don't we get efficient outcomes? Well, to be a little bit clearer in what needs to happen for this to work, think about the following situation. Suppose that we are in that exact same bargaining game that we've been analyzing, where Albert doesn't know whether Barbara is weak or strong. And suppose that absent new information, the parameters are arranged in such a way that Albert prefers making that aggressive offer that the weak type will accept, but the strong type will reject. The question that we want to know is whether the strong type can send a useful pre-play message to Albert, which will change Albert's offer. Well, for that to happen, there needs to be some sort of learning going on. And if that's happening, we need the strong type to be sending one message. Imagine that that message is, I am strong. And the weak type needs to be sending a different message. If the strong type is saying, I am strong, it only communicates information if the weak type does not send the same message. If the weak type says, I am strong as well, then when Albert is listening to these messages, he doesn't see anything different. He says, or he sees the strong type sending, I am strong. He sees the weak type saying, I am strong. And that means that conditional on receiving a message that says, I am strong, Albert's belief about Barbara's type is exactly the same as it was before the game is played. So essentially what we're looking at here is an issue with cheap talk. When you're sending a message like this, it's very easy and free and it doesn't cost you anything to just lie about whether you're the strong type or the weak type. And so we want to know that under these conditions or whether under these conditions we'll actually see the strong type willing to say that the strong type is in fact strong and the weak type not wanting to lie and send the same exact message. But as it turns out, the weak type definitely wants to send the exact same message as the strong type. To see why, imagine that they actually sent different messages. Imagine that the strong type said, I am strong, and the weak type said, I am weak. Well, conditional on those message strategies happening, when Albert receives the message, he knows exactly which type he is facing. If he's facing the strong type, he gets a message that says, I am strong. And if, he if he's facing the weak type, he gets a message that says, I am weak. Well, in that case, Albert now has complete information about Barbara's type, which means we're back in a situation where it's a, a game of complete information, so it's very easy for Albert to figure out what he should do here. So this is the case where Albert receives the message that Barbara is the strong type. He knows that Barbara has an outside option of one half in this case, and so Albert makes an offer equal to one half assuring that Barbara will accept the offer and leaving Albert with the remainder. So notice here that if you send the strong message that I am the strong type, and this is the actual message that's, that's going to magically work out where they're separating their messages and one type is sending one message, the other type is sending a different message, the strong type is saying strong, the weak type is saying weak. If you send that strong message, you get a payoff of one half. Well, if you send the weak message, Albert knows that you're weak, and so he can calculate that you're willing to accept an offer that is at least as big as one quarter. 
And so Albert makes the offer that is guaranteed to be accepted there, that one quarter offer, and Barbara accepts, and Albert receives the remainder. Well, notice in this case, when Barbara sends the message, I am weak, she receives an offer of one quarter, and she accepts that, which is less than the amount that she would receive if she were to lie and say that she's strong. If Barbara, as the weak type, continues to send this weak message, hey, I'm weak, you can offer me the weak amount, Barbara only receives one quarter. And in contrast, if she lies and she says, hey, I'm strong, Albert, she'll receive a payoff of one half instead. So Barbara does not actually have incentive as the weak type to reveal her type honestly. She wants to lie and pretend like she is the strong type. Essentially, she wants to bluff here. And we call this the incentive to misrepresent. So a weak type in a whole bunch of different bargaining scenarios, this is just one of them, but this is true under just tons and tons of different bargaining scenarios. Weak types have this incentive to misrepresent their strength. Weak types would like to pretend that they're strong because if they're strong, they're going to get a better offer and that's going to be better for them. And so they have no incentive to reveal their actual strength. They want to lie. They want to bluff like they're strong. Well, this prevents pre-play communication from being useful. Essentially, the players or the types of Barbara would want to send the exact same message. They would not want to reveal their type. And so as a result, Albert doesn't learn anything new, and we're still stuck in that same situation where Albert makes an aggressive offer, which sometimes is going to be accepted. It'll be accepted specifically by the weak type, but then other times it will be rejected by the strong type, and we'll see an inefficient outcome. And I'm going to get to this a little bit heavier later on in this unit on uncertainty. I'm going to talk about what has to be true in just about all of these sorts of bargaining games. But for now, this incentive to misrepresent actually hints at why renegotiation does not work. So you might think about the situation where Albert was in fact facing the strong type and Albert sends a or offers a weak amount to Barbara, which the strong type then rejects. You might wonder why the strong type doesn't go up to Albert and say, hey, Albert, it's a real shame that we didn't come up with an agreement this time. I was actually the strong type. Uh, you didn't give me enough. So, uh, you know, it's just too bad that we didn't come up with an agreement. But hey, you know, it's not too late. Why don't you uh, just give me a little bit better of an offer now that you know that I'm the strong type and we can get this negotiation worked out. We don't have to end up in this inefficient outcome. Well, the reason that this doesn't work, and as we'll see in much greater detail later on, is that if this were to work, if the strong type could in fact go to Albert later on and say, hey, you know, you should have given me a little bit more, if Albert were to actually give a little bit more under those circumstances, then the weak type would have the exact same incentive to say, oh, I'm going to reject this first offer, even though I'm willing to accept it, because later on I can go up to Albert and say, hey, Albert, you know, I was actually the strong type, you should give me a little bit more. This incentive to lie and pretend like you're the strong type as the weak type prevents this renegotiation from working, unless there's some sort of cost to rejecting an offer. So we'll talk about that also later on. In any case, we now know what the incentive to misrepresent is. The incentive to misrepresent is a situation where weak types have this incentive to lie like they're strong types so they get more stuff, which then prevents pre-play communication from working and leaving us still in this bad situation where we can get inefficient outcomes. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you next time when we continue analyzing this model with uncertainty, and we'll actually look at the power of knowledge next time. So I hope to see you then. Take care.